capacity in renewable energy for the continent and also the executive board member representing Africa on the Organization of Women in Science for the Developing World. Good morning. I'm uh, Professor Fred Otieno. I'm Vice Chancellor of Masinde Mliro University of Science and Technology in, in Kakamega in Kenya, and also uh, Professor of Civil Engineering and uh, Chair, Vice Chair of the ANSTI Association of National Scientific and Technological Institutions within UNESCO. Thank you. Good morning, Honorable Minister. Good morning, colleagues. My name is uh, Jane Muvanga Chinkusu, and I'm um, from Zambia. I work as Director of Science and Technology within the Ministry of uh, Education, Science, Vocational Training, and LA Education. Thank you. I am uh, Madvi Madhu. I'm a research coordinator from the Mauritius Research Council. We are more into policy making. I'm here to present to you and to share with you what we are doing in Mauritius and to see how we can better work with other colleagues from Africa. Thank you. Um, Honorable Minister, my name is Moussa El Kadim Jaffa. I'm the UNESCO representative to you, to uh, Mozambique. Um, I work many, many years with the uh, natural science sector dealing with uh, STI, science technology um, and innovation. Thank you. Good morning, Honorable Minister. My name is Faithful Mazodza. I'm a news reporter from Star FM Radio. Good morning, everyone. My name is Pedamo Chipunza. I'm with the Herald newspaper. Good morning, everyone. My name is Andrew Chimeza from the Herald newspaper. Good morning, uh, Minister. I am Caroline Anyanwebo. I'm the head of the education unit of UNESCO Harare. Good morning. Uh, my name is Pinky Merkwe. I'm the executive director for internationalization at the University of Johannesburg. I bring the greetings of my vice chancellor, Professor Iron Rensberg whom I'm stepping in for, although I purport not to speak for him. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am engineer uh, Edson Manyumbu. I'm the dean of School of Engineering Sciences and Technology at Shinoi University of Technology. Thank you. Honorable Minister, my name is Morgan Dundu. I'm a professor in structural engineering at the University of Johannesburg. I'm here to give a talk about sustainable cities. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Innocent Napi. I'm a professor in environmental engineering with the Chinoy University of Technology. And I'm a specialist in water supply and sanitation. Uh, morning, ministers. Morning, everybody. My name is Daphne Mkaronda. I am with the National Commission for UNESCO in Zimbabwe. Thank you. Uh, morning, Madam Minister and uh, all the participants. Um, Professor Mebo Imbuga, Vice Chancellor of uh, Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. I am a biochemist uh, by profession, and I'm also here to tell you that Africa will not move until all the women are on the boat of STEM. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, Honorable Minister. My name is David Chauruka from, from the Ministry of Higher and Tertiary Education, Science and Technology Development. And I'm in the Department of Research, Development and Innovation as uh, Acting Deputy Director for Institutional Research. This gathering here today is going to be very fruitful to us, especially uh, taking note that it is adorned with uh, people of high caliber, we have professors, we have vice chancellors, who are people of experience in whatever they do, and I hope their experience is going to be shared amongst, that, amongst us as we call upon collaboration in, uh, in the field of science from various departments. Thank you so much.
Good morning, Honorable Minister and distinguished guests. My name is Tauna Rufaro Karimanzira. I have recently finished grad uh, in uh, political science in uh, Zhejiang University in China, uh, and I'm an independent learner today at this event. And good morning, everyone. Honorable Minister, I'm Kane Bure from the Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education, Science and Technology in the Department of Projects and Technology Transfer. I'll be with the repertoire team today. Morning, Honorable Ministers. My name is Biula Shpoera from the Ministry of Higher and Tertiary Education, Science and Technology repertoire. Good morning, honorable minister and distinguished guests. <coughs> My name is Anthony Madweque. I work with UNESCO in the Dakar office as a program specialist for natural sciences. Thank you. Morning, honorable ministers and distinguished guests. My name is Clifford Mpewa from the Ministry of Higher and Education and Department of Projects and Technology Transfer. And My background is biochemistry and biomedical, sci biomedical sciences. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me just go to the end of the road. Oh, I thank you. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Stephen Denga, and I'm with Technomeg. Oh, good morning, Honorable Minister and distinguished guests. I'm Shailene Guvakuva with Technomeg. Good morning, everyone. I'm Pusha Skoke from New Zealand. Morning, everyone. My name is Musumba George from Star FM Radio. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nyasha from People's Voice. A very good morning to you all. My name is Chengetai Murimwa from ZFM Stereo. Good morning. My name is Sylvia Manombo, Minister of Information, Media and Broadcasting Services. Morning, all. My name is uh, Shem Bodo. I work for the Association for the Development of Education in Africa. I'm here in Zimbabwe working with the Working Group on Education Management and Policy Support. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, before I hand over to Peggy uh, to take us to the higher levels, uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> you notice that we do have science reporters here under development, and I think we need to interact with society in a positive way to make science understood. Good morning, Honorable Minister and all the guests. I'm with Technomeg, Zimbabwe's leading technology magazine. And also, let me just announce that this event is being streamed live at www.technomeg.co.zw. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. These are young Turks putting technology forward. Can I give that um, to Peggy? My, I hand over. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister, distinguished, uh, eminent African scientists, engineers, policymakers, and the community. Uh, we're pleased to have you here, and uh, we couldn't be more happier to have, you know, quality. It's not a matter of quantity. To repeat what uh, Professor uh, Jason said, uh, this is a quality. This is the brain of Africa in science and engineering. And the output, what we want to do after this, is to have the think tank to guide in terms of the Africa science and technology. We want to put science and technology at the heart of development. And we want to leapfrog and be ahead with a sustainable development goal. So I hand over to uh, my able Thank you very much, Peggy. And as protocol demands, the mountains are never, you never reach the top of the mountain by going straight up. There's always a meandering way of going about things. So I will hand over to my Deputy Minister to help me through this next chapter. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. It is my pleasure to be with you here this morning, at this special event in which we are mapping out science and technology as the driver of development. There is no way we are going to develop without science and technology. All nations that have developed have always based their success over science and technology. I will introduce my Honorable Minister, 
Honorable O.C. Zeti Muchingure, who is the Minister of High and Technology Development. Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister. We also have representation from African Union. And um, please, can you? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, it's my pleasure to be here. Um, I think the term of the conference is very critical, sustainability. I think that's the key word that uh, makes us jump to be here. Because as you know, our continent has been investing a lot of effort science since our independence days. So the sustainability is what we have to analyze and set. So it is very important to be here. It is also important to see that it is organized by UNESCO, who has been also a very, very important player in that area, STI area in Africa since our independence day. Thank you. Thank you very much, and um, we, you know we are in the seat of the chairman of African Union. You are sitting next to the chairs of African Union. <laughs> Don't forget that. Honorable yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Minister uh, of Higher Education, Science, Technology, and uh, Science and Technology Development of Zimbabwe, Honorable Deputy Minister, Honorable Regional Director and Representative of UNESCO uh, in Harare. Ladies and gentlemen, for me it's a great honor being here representing my minister, Professor Dr. Nyambiu, who can't be here due to other commitments. He sends warm greetings to Your Excellency and he says that he's looking forward working with you, not only under the chairmanship of the uh, UA, but also in, in your bilateral uh, condition. We think that this event is quite important because sustainability is really a topic of the day, but we know that it has been easy to talk about, but very difficult to implement it. We have now more riches than ever, but we still have a famine and poverty everywhere. So we think that it's really quite important. We have a new government since one month ago, and our president has made it important the fighting against poverty, fighting against the, uh, famine. That's why our Minister of Agriculture has turned it into Minister of Agriculture and Food, Se food Security. The government of Mozambique understands that it's important to work in all levels. That's why we brought together in one ministry, higher education, science and technology, and uh, professional education, uh, what is named TVT in the English acronym. So we think that the science is cross-cutting, science must be everywhere, and all sectors has to contribute, and natural sciences, engineering, should it has happened in the past, uh, leave away social component of science because that is quite important because we are humans and we are social by nature. Having said that, Excellency, I want to thank very much this opportunity and uh, thanks Zimbabwe for hosting us. Thanks UNESCO for really inviting us to this very, very important event. Thank you all. Thank you very much. This brings to an end the introductory introduction section and I hand over, if you turn to your programs, the first agenda item is a presentation on the on the uh, the welcome ad, uh, remarks by uh, regional director. You bet. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, Honorable Minister, Madam Opa Muchinguri, the Minister of Higher uh, Tertiary Education. Uh, science and Technology of Zimbabwe. Thank you very much, Madam, for hosting us here today in this beautiful and very friendly country, Zimbabwe. Um, Vice Minister uh, 
deputy minister, I should say, Dr. Kandawa, um, the permanent secretary of Mozambique, the representative of the African Union, distinguished vice chancellors, representatives from governments, development partners, distinguished scientists and engineers, and let me not forget the, the representatives of the media. It's very important that we have the media here because science is poorly understood and the importance of science, technology and innovation has, in my view, never been greater than now when we are transiting from the Millennium Development Goals to a new agenda now referred to as the post-2015 or the SDGs. So, media, please take note of the discussions and report to your audiences. A very good morning to all of you. <coughs> it is a great pleasure uh, for me to join you this morning in the opening of this first uh, consultative workshop on sustainability science in Africa. I am pleased to see such distinguished representatives from academia in Africa participating in this event. This event is not about quantity. Uh, we are few in this room. We are reaching out in terms of numbers via live streaming and tomorrow video conferencing where we connect to Asia. But this is not about quantity, this is about quality. And I'm sure that you will agree with me after the two days that our discussions will be about quality. Now this will contribute to the success of this event. And it provides opportunities for dynamic exchange of experiences and ideas. On behalf of UNESCO, I extend a very warm welcome to all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, this event on sustainability science comes at a critical juncture. As we advance towards the target date for the Millennium Development Goals, as we shape a new global agenda to follow 2015. The post-2015 agenda must address the big questions of our time. Questions about eradicating poverty about enhancing food security, promoting sustainable energy, managing water and environmental resources, controlling disease, mitigating natural and man-induced disasters, and fostering sustainable cities. Science, technology and innovation are vital for crafting new approaches that are inclusive, rights-based, and founded on solid scientific ground. The Millennium Development Goals, if you remember, did not articulate a specific role for science. Um, if you remember in 2000, when MDGs were launched, science did not, was not taken into account. And I am a strong believer that if it had, we would have reached much further in the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals. So let us avoid making the same mistake in the post-2015 development agenda. The Sustainable Development Goals to be adopted by the UN General Assembly this, this, this September, they present universal uh, goals, a universal agenda, an agenda for all countries. And they emphasize the need for transformational shifts to achieve the dual objective of poverty eradication and sustainable development. Now such transformational shifts will be needed in a number of sectors, such as energy, food production and food security, water management and, and other areas. A complicating factor is that these different shifts need to be made almost simultaneously. We have no time to lose. And this adds further to the complexities in addressing these transitions. To manage these complexities, our science has to be more clever. It calls for strong science to inform policy and for strong policies for science. 
Sustainability science is an emerging field of problem-driven interdisciplinary scholarship that seeks to facilitate interventions that foster shared prosperity and reduce poverty while protecting the environment. That's what sustainability science is about. Ladies and gentlemen, science, technology and innovation hold answers to key questions we must address about equita uh, equitable and inclusive growth, about poverty eradication, about sustainable development. As the primary UN agency with a mandate in the sciences, UNESCO's role is to help member states answer these questions together. Our position is clear. Science flourishes through dialogue and exchange in a climate of collaboration. Science cooperation lies at the heart of our efforts to build a more just, peaceful and equitable world. It is with this in mind that this event takes place simultaneously in two continents, in Asia, where they have at this moment a similar meeting, a similar gathering, in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, and here in Africa, hosted in Zimbabwe in Harare. And we plan to have tomorrow an interactive session, an, an Africa-Asia panel discussion to exchange ideas, experiences, and also plan for future collaboration. I believe there is a lot to be gained from collaboration between the two continents, Asia and Africa. Let me also remind that this year we celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Asia-Africa Conference. Do you remember? In 1955, the, the big names of Africa, of the leaders of that time, and the big names of Asia, they met in the city of Bandung in Indonesia um, to discuss uh, global challenges at that time. Now, I hope that your discussions will lead to far-reaching recommendations and strategies on how we can mobilize sustainability science to address the challenges that I mentioned before. And also, that you will be able to discuss on how we can benefit from partnerships and collaboration. Collaboration between academics, between institutions in Africa, and cooperation between the two continents, Asia and Africa. I wish you a most successful workshop, and I look forward to hear about the outcomes and recommendations from your deliberations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minis. Thank you so much, um, Hubert. Um, we've got, the for the journalist, there's a new terminology that you must take note of. Sustainability science, sustainability science for post-2015 agenda. I think you, you need to go onto your internet and find out what this is all about and talk about it until we get all our programs to respond to that conversation. Thank you very much. Um, can I call on Dr. Peggy to give us an overview of the conference? Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, to give you the overview of the conference. Mine is uh, a very simple task. And again, I would like to thank you all uh, for coming. The world economic paradigm is changing, and we're moving towards a knowledge-based economy. And Africa must compete. And if we have to compete, we have to be innovative. We have to add value to our human and natural resources. UNESCO science program has two strategic objectives. And the strategic objectives are strengthening science, technology, and innovation and policies nationally, regionally, and globally. And our second strategic objective is promoting international scientific cooperation on critical challenges to sustainable development. So it is no by coincidence that we are meeting here 
so that we can develop the partnerships in Africa and with our partners in Asia, learn from each other and create synergies. As you'll be aware, there are 17 sustainable development goals with several targets. And if looking through the sustainable development goals, you would identify that, that nine of them hinge on science and technology. The unfortunate thing is that it is not critically stated the role of science and technology, and in particular, the role of sustainability science in moving post-2015 ahead. African governments uh, have identified science as the driver for the economic development of Africa. And the African Union is here representing that. UNESCO, uh, as you know, uh, would want to associate with all partners, with member states, in creating the standards, in creating the targets for the Sustainable Development Goal. So the objective of this workshop is three, just to make it easier, is to create the platform for debate and interact to identify niche areas for Africa's capacity development in readiness for the post-2015 Sustainable Development Goals. We'd also want to develop strategic actions and foresight plans for enhancing sustainability science in Africa. And our third objective is to link up with experts in Asia to share ideas and development and develop partnerships for promotion of sustainability science post-2015. After all the deliberation, distinguished vice chancellors, top academics in this country, policy makers, the community, our media, we also have three expected outcomes. Would like to have recommendations for enhancing targets in the specified sustainable development goals to enhance sustainability science. Would also want from here to serve as a critical mass of African scientists and advocates to create and provide the leadership on sustainability science in Africa. And finally, we want to develop synergies between Africa and nation experts on sustainability science for enhanced South-South collaboration. Thank you, distinguished uh, participants. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Peggy. Uh, honorable ministers, I think your task is going to be made a lot, lot easier if this community of experts do indeed take the challenge and pave the way for your coming with your agenda for Africa's development post-2015. Thank you very much, Peggy. Um, the next presentation from African Union is a PowerPoint presentation, and it's going to be a bit of a fiddle because uh, we'll, re we'll do it last. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Yubit, are you doing the post-2015? Later as well. At this point, can I request the Deputy Minister again to request the Honourable Minister to um, present a statement? And thank you very much. Uh, help me um, welcome the Honorable Minister of Fire and Tertiary Education, Science and Technology Development as our guest speaker to address the gathering. Honorable Minister. The director. responded very well. <clears throat> the Director of Ceremonies, Mrs. Kari Manzira, the Deputy Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education, Dr. Gandawa, the Regional Director and Representative 
for UNESCO Regional Office for Southern Africa, Professor Hubert Jigzen, the United Nations Resident Representative for Zimbabwe. I hope I didn't see him. He has not arrived, Mr. Bishop. Uh, the Permanent Secretary uh, in the Ministry of Science and Technology, Mozambique, Mr. Evaristo Banquete. Did I get that correctly? Vice Chancellor here, representative from the AUU, Dog is the correct? Senior government officials here present, academics and pro specialists, and generally, the representation is very impressive. <laughs> so, women in technology. Allow me, ladies and gentlemen. To firstly welcome our foreign guests to Zimbabwe. I hope that you will take time from your busy schedules to appreciate the beauty of our metropolitan city of Harare. And I do hope you enjoy the warmth and hospitality of our people. Let me also express my appreciation for associating such high level. Asia Africa expert consultation on sustainability science to support the post 2015 agenda. My special thanks go to UNESCO in collaboration with its partners for bringing together these high level experts in science, engineering, technology, and innovation in and out of Africa. I'm advised that. You will serve as a think tank to discuss sustainable development goals with the objective of identifying a niche and emerging areas for sustainable Af science for Africa's socio-economic and technological transformation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the global development paradigm is shifting towards a knowledge-based economy. African countries are exper experiencing fast economic growth, which is based on exploitation of its natural resources reserves in the midst of high youth unemployment. This dichotomy requires that African governments put in place policies and strategies to add value to each huge natural and human resources so that we enhance shared prosperity for all. Many newly developed countries in Asia have shown that investing in science, technology, and innovation is crucial for socioeconomic development and poverty reduction. Therefore, African governments must harness the potential of its youth through education and skills training. High-level research and innovation are key to creating a critical mass of experts in science, technology, and innovation, STI, as well as provide equal opportunities and a shared prosperity for both men and women. Ladies and gentlemen, an estimated 2.5 million engineers and technicians are needed in sub-Saharan Africa to improve basic utilities such as access to reliable energy, clean water, sanitation, health, and communications. This demonstrates the need to strengthen science education in order to reverse the current trends in human capital loss seeking greener pastures outside the continent. There is need, therefore, to encourage more young women and, uh, and men to venture into scientific disciplines which offer opportunities for decent work, which is a prerequisite for a knowledge-based economy. As you are aware, Zimbabwe has successfully registered over 90% literacy rates in education. 
This has carefully been attributed to a well-developed institutional arrangement comprising of 15 universities, of which nine are state-run and six are non-state-run. We also have 13 teachers' colleges and 14 polytechnics. What remains as our challenge is to translate the knowledge base into higher levels of practical human skills in science and technology, which is much needed in our thrust for economic, socio-economic development. Ladies and gentlemen, my government places greater emphasis on increasing scientific literacy. This is done with full appreciation and realization that scientific lit uh, literacy is needed to drive economic development. It also proffers scientific and technological solutions that address complex developmental challenges. This approach is in line with the trust thrust of the second science and technology policy that was launched in 2012. As a result, new creative and innovative programs have been introduced to further improve learning approaches aimed at equipping teachers with the relevant training and resources necessary to impart and inculcate the scientific thinking and reasoning among the school-going children. The post-2015 Sustainable Development Goals offer African countries the opportunity to make major improvements on the Millennium Development Goals, which overlook the need for enhancing institutional capacity. They fail to address the issue of environmental degradation of value addition to our natural resources, which enhance prosperity and create employment for our youth. African governments, scientists, and communities therefore need to look ahead with foresight in order to plan and prepare adequately for emerging development challenges and opportunities. These new development paradigms offer African university and tertiary institutions across Africa an opportunity to develop market-oriented curricula and skills which enhance youth employability. It also creates the critical mass of experts who should drive Africa's sustainable socio-economic transformation through the use of research, new and emerging technologies. Through research, new drugs and vaccines are discovered that help to reduce Africa's mortality rates as well as increase lifespans of those infected by the opportunistic diseases such as HIV, AIDS, cancers, even Ebola. Therefore, policymakers, scientists, and government need to work together to elaborate on measurable targets tied up with good implementation plans, a good basis to achieve the SGDs. Once again, allow me to congratulate UNESCO for taking the bold step to create this platform for African leaders, academics, and policymakers to deliberate on the degree to which scientific understanding of sustainable development goals can enhance the achievement of the targets. I appeal to you, eminent scientists and experts, to work in partnership with governments, the private sector, development organizations, and local communities to introduce value addition to Africa's rich human and natural resources. This will avail the hidden opportunities in post-2015 through harnessing STI to its fullest. As we thrive to develop knowledge-based economies, STI information sharing is key. Open access to scientific information is a prerequisite for generating knowledge for sustainable development. It is now of critical importance as we look ahead post-2015 to develop a multidisciplinary approach, foster technology transfer, and also taking research further than the lab. It's high time we see tangible products and services that will address the current developmental challenges and benefit society. 
collaboration among multinationals, South South and North South countries provides a platform to share ideas and also solutions to perverse developmental challenges. Finally, it is my fervent hope that a robust resolution will emerge from this conference which will guide Africa post-2015 to, to optimize use of sustainable science. I'm also confident that possible cooperation between Africa and Asia in developing and implementing sustainability science initiatives, pilot projects, and capacity building in the area of sustainable development will also emerge from this conference. I wish you a very fruitful conference which will chart a way into the future. I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Can I request Professor Mwenje? Thank you, uh, Director of Ceremonies. Uh, Honorable Minister of Science, um, Tertiary Education, Science and Technology Development uh, in Zimbabwe, we want to thank you mostly uh, for the speech uh, that you have given, uh, the keynote speech where you have indicated that indeed Africa's resources are driving uh, global industries. However, we are doing a very little to benefit from wealth that, that is around. And uh, your indication that uh, we need to use science to solve problems of uh, employability that we have as uh, educationists uh, and as universities a challenge and uh, we have, have seen that we have to do and we need foresight uh, we take cognizance of the appeal that we have you have made that we need to work together and as well learn from Asia and the issues of value addition which your event has uh, proclaimed we thank you most sincerely for taking this time uh, to deliver this speech and um, we know that uh, we have much been given direction, and uh, these two days of our meeting will be directed by your speech. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you very much. I think we've got the excellent drafter of the resolution already in our midst. We got all the elements with very little. The drafting team are excited. They've got the elements of their resolution. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. I Um, there is uh, the next um, issue is the pre presentation by AU, which is a PowerPoint presentation. So there will be a bit of a juggle. Oh, these are seats over there. Yes, thanks. That's the hazards of technology sometimes. We have to. <laughs> and c c as soon as the, the, uh, the, EU the um, AU presentation is done, and before the departure of the minister, this is a, a, a landmark event. And we would like to have a group photo. Where did it start? Asia, Africa, collaboration in sustainable science. So we need a group photo with the honorable ministers. and. Um, all the eminent people around us. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Um, I think it was uh, very important to us to, um, to show the new strategy uh, for science, technology, and innovation of the African Union as we meet in such an important uh, topic. And probably uh, during the session, we will see uh, how we link in this type of initiative. So that is why we, 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 we opted to present uh, this uh, uh, strategy. So the outline is simple. Uh, it is a very simple presentation. One of the main uh, chapter of this strategy is how we communicate the strategy, how we present the strategy to the African stakeholder, including the public. Okay. So I will do a brief history of science and technology policy in Africa. Then I will present the African Union vision, which is the STI strategy for Africa, STISA, 24, uh, 2014-2024, this strategy is the first 10-year bracket of the Vision 2063 of the African Union. So it is the, the first 10 year of the 50-year vision of the African Union. So it is important to show you what it is. Most of you have already uh, seen it. So I will uh, come to the priority prerequisite actions in point four, the level of implementation of the strategy, the funding me mechanism, the communication and publicity, and the monitoring and evaluation. Point six and point eight are some of the new things introduced, especially to bring sustainability. Because I've, as I said, we've been doing a lot of development plan for, for a lot of years since our independence day. So when we look back, what has worked, what hasn't worked, two of the main points that have been addressed, or the intention of the new plan is to address specifically the funding, how we turn around the funding issue, and how we turn around the monitoring and evaluation issue. Next. So briefly, most of us, if not all, know this. At, after the independence days, our country focus on education, mostly to build the human capital that we need. And later on, if you go in the history, you have the Moravia Declaration, where science and technology are clearly expressed as the key to, you know, to help agenda toward development. Then the Lagos Action Plan was a 20, clear 20-year 20 plan in which uh, it is first stated that 1% GDP allocation to develop s and capabilities of our nations. You will see later that in 2007, the 1% GDP allocation to R&D was again uh, committed by our head of state, but it started back in 1980. So, the two in 2001, the NEPAD in the implementation of the MDGs, science and technology and innovation, are going to be placed in the center to reach the minimum development goals as a means, as one of the means. Then in 2003, the creation of AMCOS, the Conference of Science and Technology Minister of Africa, who was uh, in charge of preparing some of the key decisions for our head of state and government in science and technology. Then in 2005, the Consolidated Plan of Action was set. This is very important when we talk about the new strategy because it is the review of the CPA that has, uh, that has given the, the, new, the new plan. You know, taking the experience of the CPA, the new plan was created, the STISA uh, 24. So next. So here is the vision and the role of STI at the African Union. The vision is an integrated, prosperous, and peaceful Africa driven and managed by its own citizens, and so on, where STI has a central stage. But there are some requisites, some prerequisites, which is, for example, 
build the infrastructure, okay, and break and build a uh, human capital, because in most of the the plan we did since our Independence Day, one of the missing link is critical mass. The plans are beautiful, they are sound, but we don't have the human capital to implement. So this is key to to, to focus on, and I think uh, colleagues and. Honorable Minister have already addressed this point rightfully. Then we have also to understand we must undertake programs that are anchored in a national and regional developmental plan, development plan. I mean programs that have meaning to our people. So this is a complicated issue sometimes when you don't when you don't master the fund you are using. Okay, when the fund is coming from somewhere and the priority can change and you may be doing some of the plan that you are not in charge of. So the whole mission is to accelerate Africa's transition to an innovation-led knowledge-based economy. Next, please. So here, the CPA 2005, the Consolidated Plan of Action, which is available on the internet. Also, the STISA is available on the internet. This was a five-year plan, the first one, with strategy pillar, capacity building, node production, technology innovation, with flagship program. This has now become, after the review, this has become and transformed into the agenda 2014-24 uh, in the agenda 2063 of the African Union. Next, please. So, again, I'll push on the... So the plan is phased, like what you see here. We are now at the first phase, which is institutional setting. Institutional setting means that we are now setting institutions that are going to intervene in the implementation of the plan. And then after that, you have different phases of mobili uh, mobilizing programs. So the content here are driven from the sectorial uh, framework of the African Union and uh, stakeholder of research discussions and some of the speech, uh, the, the big speech of uh, Kwame Nkrumah, uh, <laughs> the, the initial speech of Kwame Nkrumah has also fed these different uh, topics that are, that are going to be addressed by the plan. So the prerequisite, upgrade the, the African STI infrastructure, which means that we need to revamp our universities, our center of uh, research, institute of research, center of excellence, etc., etc. Enhance technical and professional competencies. Critical mass is important, is key. Stimulate collaboration. Here we conduct it. Actually, I work for the. Um, the Observatory of Science and Technology and Innovation of the African Union. We conducted a study where we compared output production, scientific production of output of the 54 nations, the 54 member states of the African Union. And what came from there is that collaboration between African nations are just 10 percent, okay, which is really low. So this is key because there are synergies between countries, between regions to exploit, which we are not exploiting. And then IP issue and regulation system and so on. Build a, a science culture. This is very important because usually we go to the minister, if we go to honorable's office and we say, we have a beautiful plan, give us the money or the, the, the support, then she will look at the plan and say, what does Zimbabwe really gain from this? So I, I, we think that we have a lot of work to do also as, as, as player and stakeholder in really explaining the return on investment in science. We know that science participates to development. We know all these broad statements, which are true. But there are some key areas where we could really put down black and white what it really gives to region, to country, to convince, you know, deciders to help us. 
Next. So the level of implementation, it is supposed that uh, countries are going to have STI framework that are anchored in regional framework, anchored in the STISA, so that uh, uh, synergies are exploited at national, regional, and continental level. At each level, there will be design, elaboration, and uh, implementation, communication, and evaluation of the program. Next. So this is basically the governance structure of the plan, which is very important. So you have over there the head of state and government that will champion this plan and adopt priorities. You have the executive council that will adopt the program. And uh, the key domain that I showed you, you are permanent representative of countries that will be here to advise. The, of all the, the 54 member states to advise the executive council, then AMCOST, the conference of minister, will be in a coordinating body which that will advise in the process. The African Union Commission is the secretariat. Now you have the NEPAD agency that will help in the technical implementation and fund mobilization. Okay? resource mobilization and technical support will be given by, by NEPAD and NEPAD will support the AUC. At the regional level, there will be funding mechanisms here. At the country level, there will be funding mechanisms. So this is some of the new thing. Here the funding has to be shift from most fund coming from abroad or at least reducing fund from coming abroad to local indigenous uh, uh, funds, funding mechanisms. I think that that's one of the, the, the major new intention of this plan. Okay? Then all this entity will engage the private sector. The African Development Bank will set up an STI program that are anchored in the plan in some of the pillars uh, that I showed. Then, in the institutional setting, institution has been set now to monitor and evaluate the plan. This monitoring and evaluation is also particular in the sense that it will give a standardized uh, monitoring and evaluation process to, the, to all the countries, to all the region, and at the continental level. So, that will be, it will be, um, annual reports with the participation of stakeholders, with the participation of countries, region, there will be So funding mechanism, that is it. There are several ways to to, to, to several ways are proposed at the national and regional level to fund the plan. An estimate of this uh, are already on, on, on paper. So this is where we are going to go. The intention really is to shift the funding for sustainability. This is very important. Next, please. Communication and publicity, it is important that uh, we communicate the plan that the general public accept the plan and get engaged in the plan. And there are several ways of doing that. So monitoring and evaluation, the NEPAD agency, AUSTI, from which where I work, and ARIC, will identify a minimum set of targets and performance indicators. Actually, that is why uh, Dr. Mahama uh, is not here. They are currently doing just that in South Africa. So stakeholder countries and region are meeting to talk about that first point, performance indicator, which performance indicator are going to be uh, chosen, uh, agreed on, and used by all stakeholders, including countries, region, so that everybody is evaluated at the same time and with the same standards. 
that was some of the point missing in the previous plan. So reporting on target and performance indicators, so there are some risk management that are uh, enumerated in the plan. So finally, again, the summary is here. It is a very integrated process where uh, specific uh, institution, RECs, the public sector, member state, center of excellence like uh, uh, the Pan-African University. For example, here, the Pan-African University are supposed to play a big role in this. Uh, it is a plan to create 50 uh, 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 polls where you have 10, 10, 10 big programs attributed to each of the five polls with leaders and so on and so on in the area and domain that I showed you. So, and then we have the usual interaction with the development agency and international partners. Next. So that was it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we are a bit hard on time. I think we'll have a discussion after an interaction, but um, we have got interviews with the press, with the honorable ministers, uh, AU, Mozambique, UNESCO. They will be in the holding room uh, while everybody else is having tea outside very quickly. The minute the, as soon as the finisher, minister finishes a tea and interview, we go downstairs, take a picture, and we see her off. Thank you very much. This, come, this brings to the end of our opening ceremony. Thank you very much. Can I have the top table following me, please?